So yesterday we have seen uh, all the factual uh, contents, contents of uh, National Family and Health Survey Report, fifth one. Today look at uh, the analytical aspects of the report. What are the hits and what are the misses? Where we have succeeded and uh, where we have to improve upon and how to improve upon also. I have said a very important topic from your uh, examination point of view. Right. So, these uh, reports uh, really help us in uh, finding out uh, India's uh, position in Human Development Indices, HDI, because they will tell us about uh, mortality rates, they will also tell us about uh, availability of uh, nutritious food to the children. They also tell us about uh, gender uh, uh, empowerment or gender development indices. So let us see what are the important uh, uh, successes uh, that we have achieved as part of this report. First and foremost, we can say that uh, uh, more children in the group uh, between 12 to 23 months more children in the group between 12 to 23 months have uh, received vaccines what you call universal immunization program compared to the previous reports they have received vaccines compared to the previous uh, report second important uh, finding of this report is uh, the TFR total fertility rate has come down to 2%, 2.0. TFR total fertility rate had come down to 2.0 from 2.2 percent earlier. From 2.2 percent earlier, total fertility had come down from 2 to 2.2 to 2 percent. That means India has been able to. Yesterday we have seen this thing from 2.2 to 2 now. So what it really indicates, uh, we are in the process of uh, stabilizing our population. Of course, excluding Bihar. There the explosion is continuous and it will continue forever, right, till the end of the world. All these statistics are only for rest of India, right. Then uh, uh, it also shows that family planning policies have become su successful. Family planning programs, contraceptives and everything else had become successful. Next important uh, success of this uh, program, of uh, this survey is, uh, you know, for the first time, India has uh, more women per 1000 men, gender ratio also. For the first time we have more women per 1,000 men. Uh, not overall, only among the, in some states. More women per 1,000 women, yes. Right. Next, uh, childhood nutrition also has improved. Childhood nutrition also has improved even though it has improved only marginally. Next important findings of this survey is uh, there is a more danger of uh, lifestyle diseases, modern lifestyle diseases for people, danger of modern lifestyle diseases. What are these modern lifestyle diseases? Yes blood sugar, hypertension, right. But as we say, there are uh, discrepancies uh, within the states, many discrepancies within the states, right. There are many discrepancies within the states. Still, uh, IMR is very high. Now let us look at the failures, let us look at uh, 
the failures. IMR is very high, infant mortality rate. Wasting and stunting among children is also very high. W A S T I N G and stunting among children is also very high. Yeah, wasting and stunting, W A S T I N G and stunting among children is uh, still very high. Severe wasting, W A S T I N G and stunting among children is very high. And uh, among urban population, urban population, obesity is also becoming a major issue. Obesity. Among uh, urban population, obesity is also becoming a major issue. Obesity is also becoming a major issue among urban population. Next, uh, relatively uh, South and uh, South Indian states are performing better in terms of these indicators compared to North and West South Indian states. Right? Next, uh, availability of nutritious food. Availability of nutritious food to children is still a problematic area. Availability of nutritious food to children is still a problematic area. Still a problematic area, especially in rural areas. Especially in uh, rural areas. Next, uh, Pandemic also has uh, severely impacted. Pandemic also has severely impacted it has also severely impacted uh, the efforts of the government. Childhood stunting has risen. During the pandemic, childhood stunting has uh, increased in uh, 13 states. It has increased in 13 states, 1-3, 13 states. Anemia among uh, children and women, anemia among children and women has increased. In 12 states, it has increased in 12 states. Malnutrition still is impacting millions of children. Malnutrition is still impacting uh, millions of uh, children. All over the country. In spite of uh, in spite of various schemes of the government, in spite of various uh, schemes of uh, the government, right? So this is what uh, we can draw as a conclusion from the report. Now let us see what can be done by the government, the most important thing, what should be done by the government what can be done by the government. Uh, we have to look towards what is called food security 2.0, the new version of food security. What is this, uh, the new version of food security that we are talking about? We have to go beyond the quantity, quantitative aspects of food security to qualitative aspects. Quantitative to qualitative. From quantitative to qualitative aspects of uh, food security. So, what can the government do? What, what should the government do? The focus should be on uh, increasing uh, the scope of uh, portion abhyan. 
Fever SHAN. Portion 2.0. Portion 2.0. Right? And uh, and also increasing uh, the scope of uh, midday meal schemes around 11.8 crore children benefit out of this midday meal schemes 11.8 crore children benefit midday meal schemes 11.8 crore children benefit out of these schemes and it should be extended also what kind of extension that we are talking about here Apart from the meals they are provided, children also should be provided breakfast. Children need at least three meals in a day. So they should be also given breakfast. Right? And the scheme should be provided to, extended to, the scheme should be extended to pre primary children also. It should be extended to pre primary school children also. Pre primary. Then, uh, next, uh, there must be better a social audit of all these schemes. Better social audit of all these schemes. Social audit of all these schemes uh, done by the stakeholders. Done by the stakeholders. That is the parents of the children. Next, creation of a school nutritional gardens. Creation of school nutritional gardens. School nutritional gardens to provide fresh vegetables and fruits to children. School nutritional gardens. That means uh, the schools must be having their own uh, inner gardens to provide uh, fresh food to the children. Involvement of a farmer producer organizations. Involvement of FPO, farmer producer organizations, to provide. Uh, Again, fresh vegetables and fruits to children. To provide fresh vegetables and fruits to children. Farmer, producer or nations. Next. Emphasis on local food traditions. Emphasis on local food traditions. Right. Emphasis on local food traditions. So that uh, local food traditions, for example, what children eat in uh, Northeast is different from what they eat in South. What they eat in West is different from what they don't eat in Punjab. Because in Punjab they eat everything. Right? So you have to focus on local food traditions. Right? Next, what else should be done? Next, enhancing the outlays, increasing the expenditure, enhancing outlays of flagship schemes like portion, of flagship schemes like portion, PYSHAN. Enhancing outlays of flagship schemes like portion and linking them to outcomes, linking them to outcomes. We will talk about all of them also later as part of our uh, budgets, outcome budgets and linking them to outcomes. Next, uh, right, what are the other uh, things? Next important uh, solution is uh, the government must increase its uh, health expenditure and education expenditure combined together to at least 6 percent of GDP. Health and education expenditure 
combined to at least to 6% of GDP. Next solution, strengthening Anganwadi centers. Do you know what are these Anganwadi centers? Yes, strengthening Anganwadi centers. Increasing the health and education expenditure to at least 6% of GDP. Strengthening Anganwadi centers. Then the next solution, promoting community kitchens in rural areas. Promoting community kitchens in rural areas. Next, integrating schemes like community kitchens. What, is, what are these community kitchens? People in village running the kitchen by themselves wherein the children can go at any point of time and can have the food they want. The, these community kitchens are run by the social audit committees in the villages and uh, the money will be provided by the government. Very simple, you know, instead of uh, the government spending uh, lakhs of crores of rupees on food security act, just have only community kitchens, divert all the money to community kitchens. For example, you know, what is the problem here in India? You have this program like ICDS, now portion of Yan. all these programs are there and then food security act, then uh, Anganwadi centers, most of them are only for you know midday meal scheme, right? Most of them are only for children and women. In Food Security Act, you also have a separate scheme from uh, for women also. So what is happening here is that the beneficiaries are the same, but the schemes are many, right? As we study with a prismatic society, a single function performed by multiple structures. So what is happening? The government is allocating some amount of money to all these schemes. Does the government have uh, the enough money to allocate uh, to all these schemes combined together? So what is happening here? If the government has 100 rupees, they will give 10 rupees to all these schemes where the requirement for each scheme is 50 rupees. At the end of the day, there will be a failure. There will be a failure. Why? Because not even a single scheme would be receiving, would be receiving enough amount of finances. On top of it, when there are so many schemes, there will always go for leakage also. Corruption. More schemes means more corruption. And another problem with so many schemes is, there will be doubling of work. You know, that means uh, the same work will be done two, three times by two, three institutions. Right? So, what could be the solution then? Instead of having so many schemes, let there be only one scheme per children. You know, from the age of one to age of 14. Let there be only one scheme. What is that one scheme? Let there be what we call community kitchens. Right? Where free food will be provided both to the mothers and the child, children. Qualitative food, nutritious food. And how to reduce corruption? Very simple. Let this uh, community kitchens be run by self-help groups. Let this community kitchens be run by self-help groups. And who are self-help who are part of these self-help groups? The rural rural women only. Very simple. Rural women only. So they will be running the schemes for themselves only. If they are running the schemes for only themselves, can there be scope for any corruption? Right? If the schemes are run by bureaucracy, if the schemes are run by private sector, if the schemes are run by NGOs or civil society organizations, there will be a lot of scope for corruption. 
Why? Because they will have to keep their margins. They will have to look there, look for their profits. On the other hand, if you are, on the other hand, if you are, right, allowing the stakeholders to run these schemes with the bureaucracy acting as a mediator or a facilitator, then you can easily eliminate all kinds of corruption. For example, on Food Security Act, the government is spending almost every year 4 lakh crores, 4.5 lakh crores on Food Security Act to provide, uh, you know, food grains only, not cooked food, hot meals, to provide only raw food grains to people living below poverty line. Similarly, we have this ICDS scheme, Integrated Child Development Scheme. Now, what is the reason why these schemes like ICDS are a failure? Why do we say that the schemes like ICDS are a failure? Now, what is the problem here with ICDS scheme? More, maximum problem for children in rural areas is that they don't have access to safe drinking water and nutritious food. So what happens? They have uh, basic problems related to health like uh, you know, due to you know, insufficient food and uh, better access to drinking water. So they will go to these ICDS centers. The doctors, what do they do? They just give them only good food and good water, you know, drinking water. Within one week, uh, they will recover. They will go back to their homes. Again, when they go back to their homes, again they will have the same, uh, you know, uh, deficient food and uh, dangerous uh, drinking water. After one week, again they will go to ICDS centers. And the government says that ICDS centers are extremely successful. Is it a success? So, what is the solution? Very simple solution. Instead of uh, spending a huge amount of money on running those ICDS centers and Anganwadi centers and everything else, let there be only what we call community kitchens. Let the people in rural areas, especially the self-help groups, run these community kitchens. 24 hours they are open. Anybody, whenever they want, they can go and have the food. Especially these community kitchens are for children and women. Then you can solve all the problems and take the money you are spending on all these schemes combined together, that which we have mentioned here, and give it to the people. Let there be social audit. When the stakeholders themselves are implementing, automatically there is no scope for any corruption. They can usually achieve the outcomes also. As we study in our health topic also in your uh, uh, political governance paper, if you can provide safe, safe drinking water to every citizen in our country, 90% of the diseases can be easily you know, cured. That is what we call proactive measures. Very simple, provide safe drinking water and provide nutritious food also to the people, nothing else. And why do you want to spend so much amount of money which mostly results in corruption? For example, if the government is spending around 4.5 lakh crores of rupees on, on Food Security Act, around at least more than 2.7 lakhs will be spent only on financing, on financing the corrupt food corporation of India. Close down the food corporation of India and uh, give uh, all the food grains directly to the people at the lowest level. Have uh, what you call uh, decentralized food procurement at the lowest level. Give that food directly to the community kitchens. And in the process you will be saving a lot of money and also you will also be improving the health of uh, especially women and children. But again, if you do all these things, where is the scope for corruption? If you do all these things, where is the scope for corruption? That is the reason why these kind of reforms will never be implemented. On the other hand, if you start one more program, the Prime Minister can say that I have started one more program, PM Potion 2.0. Right? That is where the problem is. So, what we are saying is that the ultimate solution is, you know, combine all these programs, integrate all of them, and have only one single program, you know, take a village as a basic unit, and, you know, calculate the number of people in the village. And what is the amount of uh, money that is required to feed, you know, women and children? Give the same money to the community kitchens. Let these community kitchens will be run by self-help groups. Let the social audit committees in the village, let the social audit committees in the village, you know, evaluate the performance in terms of outcomes. As we study, four is economy, efficiency, effectiveness and equity. All of them can be easily achieved. This is the solution that you have to write ultimately because more number of programs means insufficient allocation of resources. At the end of the day, nothing can be achieved also.
Similarly, the same thing we talk about uh, health also. Primary health care centers are there in the villages. And what this corona crisis has proved is that these primary health care centers uh, have been a complete failure. In a state like Uttar Pradesh, on an average, it was proved that in corona crisis times, a person had to walk for at least 20 kilometers to go to the nearest primary health care center, which is not there also. In uh, uh, Bihar, audit was done regarding the primary health care centers. And it was found out that 98% of them are not functioning. Remaining 2% were converted into cow sheds. Buffalo and cow sheds. Right? So, again the same thing we say. Give responsibility of these primary health care centers to the people at the lowest level. That is what we call public-private people panchayat partnership. Please remember all these questions were asked in your quality governance paper repeatedly. All of them. Right? So this is what uh, we are saying here. And uh, let these community kitchens, let them also develop uh, what is called horticulture and uh, fruits and vegetables which are necessary uh, for the people in the locality. They are also developing horticulture, you are also developing what is called, uh, you know, uh, uh, total agriculture, the concept which, which is, we are talking about right now in agriculture also. Right? This is what... Uh, you know, we say about these things so that, uh, you know, children will not be impacted by inflation. Women also have access to better health care and better, uh, you know, uh, food also, nutritious food also. Very simple solution. Right? So that is what it is. And tomorrow we will take up uh, another imp uh, interesting topic. And you can always give me the topics which you want me to discuss also. Right? Yes. Yeah. Yes, everything, you know. Right now, you know, what we have seen during the corona crisis is that. Just a minute. Uh, <laughs> right. Don't worry, tomorrow we will remove the AC. Right. So, what we have seen is that during the corona crisis, for almost two years, there were no schools. When there are no schools, there is no midday meal scheme also. Schools meet on an average around 250 days in a year. And what about the remaining 110 days? Children will not have any access to food also. And they are only providing one food, one meal a day, that is midday meals. In a true community kitchens, you can have 24 hour availability of food. And you will be spending only one tenth of the money that you are spending on midday meal schemes or other schemes also. This is what we study in a, in a, Mathematics, shortest distance between two points is always straight line, right? The shortest distance between two points is always a straight line. And what we are doing, here the government, here the people, in between we are bringing in a, in a bureaucracy, we are bringing in institutions, we are bringing in civil society organizations, they are bringing in NGOs, they are bringing in media, they are bringing in private sector and you are moving like this. Right? That is where the problem is. Yeah. Why? Why? You will not be part of community kitchen, so there will not be any conflict. Right? These communications are only for women and children. You are ancient, so don't worry. There is not, when people are running themselves, there is no scope for any conflict. Because if there is any mis, you know, misuse, who will suffer? Stakeholders. Right? So it will not. Yes. They are not functional. In some areas during the corona crisis, these communications functioned, which were run by the NGOs. Yeah. We can make it uh, a regular activity. As I have said, uh, you know, stop all these programs, divert all these resources only for one program, communications. And what is the amount of money you are spending? With one tenth of the money, you can see tremendous results also. But only thing is that it will drastically reduce corruption. 
it will also drastically reduce the role of bureaucracy and political executive it will drastically reduce the role of contractors private contractors who are running these midday meal schemes obviously they will not accept it In developed countries you know they are called developed they don't have to worry you know because the per capita income is very high they provide uh, you know their the families can provide best food to their children america's per capita income is seventy thousand dollars so they don't have to worry they, that is what we said developed countries do not depend on people of developed countries do not depend on the government for their survival even the poorest person in america is called mukesh ambani in india poverty relative poverty in america poverty is there in america poverty is what we call relative poverty in india we have 